Okay, hello, hello, it's Kiraga here, going over everything you need to know about how to participate in my uh, Quad Cup, uh, you know, tournament, which is the fourth one we've done, first one that I've won, uh, tournament two is that I'm winning. If you want to 1v1 Minesweeper, uh, this will go, I'm going to go over everything you need to know in order to, you know, participate and, uh, you know, play and maybe win prizes, you know. So first thing you want to do is you want to join this Discord server right here. This is our uh, Quad Cup Discord. Uh, it'll be where you want to go in order to see all the updates about what we're doing, and also when you are, you know, when we're actually doing the tournament. If you have any questions or like technical issues, it's uh, where you want to contact us, and it's also where you organize your matches to find like who you're playing against, and you know, organize with them to you know set up lobbies and stuff and find them. So. Step one is you need a Discord account and you need to join at the Quad Cup server. Step number two is you want to have an account on this site called uh, mnsw.pro. Uh, uh, that is the URL. I'm going to have links to all of these in the description. So on this site is where you're actually going to be playing your matches. So the way you want to use this site is uh, you sign up here and um, yeah, make an account. I'll go over a bit later uh, how you use this account. But first thing you want to do is make sure you have a profile on this before signing up. Because we don't want to, because when you create games, you're going to be playing against, um, you're going to see like the names of the people in the lobby and we don't want to have a bunch of, uh, you know, anonymous versus anonymous. So while you can create games uh, without making an account, uh, we want everyone to have an account because we don't want any games to be like, you know, anon versus anon and we don't know who's playing. So, uh, you know, next step is make sure you have an MNS Pro account. And then after that, I recommend having a Minesweeper.online account. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with the tournament itself, but it is related to the prizes. So, um, if you have an account on here, it helps because it means you can get uh, extra mine coins, which is basically the currency that uh, the site uses, which is pretty nice if you want to win some extra things. There are cash prizes as well as the mine coins that are on the site. So mine coins are just, you know, the, uh, you know, the currency the site uses, use them to buy stuff and things, you know, you could buy some garnets or just whatever you want really. But yeah, so make this an account on the site. If you don't have an account on the site, uh, we can instead, uh, either, you know, have someone, uh, specify that you want to take in your place. So if your friend has a Mindship online account and you know, gives your prizes to them if you win any, or you can just choose to forgo the uh, Minecoin prizes completely and will, you know, redistribute whatever you would win among the other participants or maybe pay out, you know, to the next person or, or something. Kind of depends. We'll uh, figure it out. And then uh, once you have all those accounts set up, uh, it's you'll be ready to sign up on a challenge. So I'm going to have a, uh, you know, tournament sign up page for our Quad Cup 4 which is uh, this one here. You go, you got to uh, do, there's a sign up on the page where you put in your Discord username, Minds for Pro username, WOM username if you want. It is required here, but if you really want to skip it, just say like, you know, that you want to skip or whatever. And if you are going to put in someone else's, then please specify that you're going to put in uh, someone else's uh, info because we are using this for uh, seating the tournaments, and we're mainly looking at the WOM profile, which is one of the main reasons why we have the Minesweeper.online profile. Because for most people, we're just going to use, uh, you know, this link, or, you know, use the name, look up what your best times are, and try and uh, seed you accordingly. But if you, like, don't play on Minesweeper.online, and you want to, you know, get seeding still, we have the option of using uh, other profile sites, such as, you know, Minesweepergame.com, or your cell lay profile, or you could even use other ones. For example, if you have like a YouTube channel that has like some PBs uploaded, you could like link to one of those, or you just uh, speedrun.com leaderboards. You could link to your profile there and be like, hey, like this is me on speedrun.com. And like I have a like Google Minesweeper, for example. If you have uh, one like those, we can use those to help seed you. And yeah, so it's basically, um, you know, just uh, whatever you want, but you, know, you don't have to have any of those. If you have absolutely no like evidence of any Minesweeper score, then you're probably going to be seated towards the bottom 
which you probably don't want to be because, as you can see, being sighted, as you'll be able to see a bit later, being seated higher, it's going to be a bit of an advantage. But yeah, so, you know, once you've got all these, you can sign up and you'll be part of the, uh, the bracket, which is pretty nice. Doo -doo -doo. And then once you are signed up, you're going to be up in this uh, bracket here. And basically how it works is if we go to this, it's going to be a double elimination bracket. So it's going to be, uh, you're going to play, uh, you know, several rounds and we're going to get to a finals. And you have uh, basically two chances to get through. And it is a little bit complicated, but you be, will be able to see if you go to the bracket uh, page. So I would recommend keeping this page open to see like who's playing against who, and like who you're going to play against next potentially. And these are currently, this is what the bracket currently looks like, but it's going to, you know, change up uh, once we have more people uh, signed up. So this is not really final, but this is what it currently looks like. So we have, you know, the first round of winners, and then a second round, and then a loser's bracket. So basically, the winner's bracket is pretty much like a single elimination up until we get to the semi semi-finals here. Or the winner's finals, as it's sometimes called. And so first of all, we're going to have, you know, a round one, and then some people already start in round two, who basically get buyers, and the buyers are determined by your seating. So, you know, currently Dart Hong, Gadget Lad, Llama are like the top seated players, and because we don't have a power of two number of players right now, so right now, currently we have, as of the recording of this video, we have 12 players, and we need 16 to get like a fully balanced bracket. So we have four people currently who are getting buys. So these people skip ahead to the, you know, the first round. And then you have, you know, the, you know, the pre, the first round. These people skip ahead to the second round, and then the first round we have, you know, some people playing. And if you want to know, like, who you're playing and who you might be playing next, uh, you can see here, like, where people go. So you have, you know, Geki versus J-Hot. If, for example, uh, Geki wins, they will move up here. You follow the arrow. And then the player who loses goes into the loser's bracket if you're in winners. If you're in losers and you lose, and you get eliminated completely. So let's say Geki beats J-Hot. You go, okay, well, if you're J-Hot, and you go, okay, I'm going to go see where I play. And you look down here, and you look for loser of fourth. Because you look on the left here, and that is the round that's played. You're like, okay, I'm going to be playing in a match, you know, number nine. So you'll be loser four versus loser five. So if J-Hot wants to know who he's playing against, he'll look up here and find number five, which is going to be Dart Hong versus whoever wins between uh, Rose Bows and Devil Zoa. So for example, if uh, Devil Zoa wins this one, Rose Bows goes down to losers, and then Devil Zoa progresses on to fight Dart Hong, and then after Dart Hong and Devil fight, uh, Devil Zoa will get down to lo uh, losers if, for example, Dart Hong wins. And they'll, because this is five, they'll go down into this one as well, and then we'll get J Hort versus Devil Zoa. So, you know, it's a little bit complicated, but. You know, if you're lost, just like, you know, read uh, who's playing who, and you'll figure it out from there. Generally, the loser's bracket is going to take, like, twice as long as the winner's bracket, because for every, like, you know, loser's round, there's going to be a couple... For every winner's round, there's going to be a couple loser's round. So if you know, one, two, three, four winner's rounds, and then we have, you know, one, two, three, you know, four loser's round, and then a fifth loser's round. It's, you know, it takes a little bit longer for the losers to go through. So if you're, like, if you're winning... You might have a bit of a break between your matches because you have to wait for the losers rounds to play out. But it's kind of an advantage because you get more of a break between games and you don't have to win quite as many when you're going through winners compared to losers. So, you know, we'll complete like this. And then once we get to the end, uh, we'll have one person who got to the losers bracket but then beat everyone else who got to losers, which would be every other player except for whoever wins in uh, winners. So you'll have, you know, all the winners. Let's say Dart Hong and Orc continue on. And they fight, say Dart Hong wins here, and then you have Gadget and Llama fight. Let's say Llama wins here. We have Dart Hong versus Llama in the semi-finals. Whoever wins out of those will move on to the finals. And then the, you know, the loser of between 
whoever is ends up here, say, you know, Llama and Gadget or whatever, they'll move down into the uh, loser's final against whoever won out of the loser's bracket out of all these rounds, the loser's final and the finals. And then eventually we'll have the loser's finals. And then this is the uh, important bit. Is whoever is in winners will fight against whoever wins the loser's bracket. And the person who comes from the loser's bracket will have to win uh, multiple times. So for example, if you have Dart Hong wins all the winners matches and gets to the finals here, and then the loser's bracket is say Gadget Lab, you'll have Gadget Lab versus Dart Hong. And even if Gadget Lab wins the round, there'll be a reset. And then we'll have to have Gadget Lab versus Dart Hong again. And Gadget Lab will have to win it two rounds in order to become the overall victor of the tournament. Well, Dart Hong only has to win the first one or the second one, and he'll be the winner. So even if you have like Dart, even if you say, you know, Gadget wins from losers, and then Dart wins after the reset, Dart Hong is still the overall winner of the championship. Because basically, it's like Dart Hong is put into the losers bracket after he loses uh, in, in the grand finals. And he still is uh, the overall winner, because he only lost one match. And, uh, you know, Gadget Lab would have lost two by this point. Uh, I know it's a bit of a long rambly explanation, but, um, you know, we'll figure it out in the day. And like I said, just use these, um, you know, explanations to figure out where to go. And the uh, bracket should be live updating as you put in your scores, as you're playing. So, you know, you, you won't have to know how the brackets work to figure out how to play it. But, you know, we will be getting... Uh, that will be, you know, handled automatically. But, you know, if you, if you want to know, like, who you're expecting to play, then it'll be good to know how it works. Uh, yeah. And so, now on to the explanation of how you're actually going to play these matches. So, you're going to play on mnsw.pro. So, what you want to do is you want to find, like, your opponents who you want to play against. And then you have to, you know, decide one of you is going to have to create the game and have the other one join. And so if you're the one creating the game, you know, get on to MNSW Pro. And you want to go create game here. You have this little window pop up. You want to go and make sure that it is a, a classic. So not survival. So you don't want this on. You want it off. So it's a classic game. You want to make sure it is an intermediate game. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, it does allow flags, so do not do this. Make sure no flags is off. Make sure no guessing is on. Make sure first max competitors is set to exactly one, especially if um, it's going to be a spectated game, which uh, you'll be able to check before it starts if it's going to be that or not. And we want, for the majority of the matches, it's going to be first to four. And also, uh, do not click differential win loss either. Uh, private uh, shouldn't matter too much. It just means that if you do create a private one, you'll have to, you know, send the link directly to your opponent. And if it's being spectated directly to the uh, the streamer, which would be me, so that we could find it. But I would recommend just keeping this off, and then you can find all the games in the lobby. It's easier to find in the lobby rather than via direct link. So I'd recommend turning this off, but you can turn it on if you absolutely have to. So make sure all these are correct. So the important thing is it's first of four, it's intermediate, it's no guessing, our flags are allowed, and yeah. And you know, make sure it's not a co-op game, all those first of four. Do an accident. So once you've done that, you'll create the lobby, and then you will see in the list of players here, there'll be a list of players to the right. It's going to be a plus next to the people who are going to participate. And you want to make sure that you only have uh, two people in with pluses on their names before you start. If your match is being streamed, then you're going to have me in as a spectator or possibly, uh, you know, Kira, depending on if it's uh, not working for me. So, and if we, if we do have an extra person in, Make sure you have a plus next to your name and your opponent's name, and then say my name, Karaga, this is my account, will be underneath both of yours, 
and it should not have a plus next to it. So you should have, uh, say, if you're, you know, Joe and you're versing against Bob, you want to have plus Joe here and then plus Bob here and then Kvarga below with, um, with no plus next to it. And this is only if your match is being streamed. If your match is not being streamed, then you don't have to worry about that and you can just play. And the, what you want to do is once you're ready with the rules, so, so make sure that your opponent also has the correct rules on. You want int classic, no guess, 1v1, first to four. This is going to be the format for the majority of games. For, you know, all the games up to top four, where we're going to change things up a bit, make it a bit more interesting. But before that, everyone is going to do the same format. Int, no guess, classic, 1v1, first to four. And once you have that, you click on start. So here we can't start yet because there's no competitors yet. But if you have your competitor, it should be able to start. You'll have a countdown go down. Uh, you can also make sure that you have options on that you prefer. So for example, if you like having left click cord because you're used to World of Minesweeper or other sites that allow it, you can turn that on. You can increase the board size if you want to make sure that uh, you know you can see playing a comfortable size. I definitely recommend uh, playing around with these and playing around with the lobby and stuff like that before you start the actual tournament so everything is, you know, arranged well for you. Uh, you can also change your skin to a Garfield skin. I don't recommend this, but uh, it is an option. It does make the game a bit harder to play in my opinion, but it only affects you, so there's no, uh, you know, penalty for doing it. Just know that if you have a Garfield skin on, you're going to see Garfield skin, and your opponent is not going to see Garfield skin. And uh, I think it's definitely easier to play with the default Windows XP skin. But hey, that's just me. You can also add a background image uh, if you want. It doesn't matter too much. And then custom board positions, stuff like that. So, you know, increasing the board size. Probably pretty useful. Just make sure you don't make it too big, or else you won't be able to see your opponent's games. Oh dear. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, feel free to ask in the Discord, by the way. That is the, that is the place to go for all your questions to be answered. Uh, yeah, so finally, I'm going to go over prizes a bit. We have quite a few prizes, thanks to some uh, generous sponsors. Uh, most notably, uh, Rydia7 donating 150 US dollars for the bulk of these mine coins, uh, for the bulk of the cash money, US dollars. So first place gets $75, and you get 200,004 mine coins. And then second place gets mine coins in cash, third, fourth, up to eighth, all get cash prizes, and then top 16 all get mine coin prizes. So even if you're not the greatest mine super player of all time, Currently, we don't even have enough people signed up to win mine coins. So if you sign up, and we're going to get too many more people, there's a pretty good chance you can at least win some mine coins. And if you're pretty good, then there's a decent chance you should win at least $5 from this tournament, which I think is a pretty good deal, considering it's completely free to sign up. And uh, finally, if you want to watch the tournament, it's going to be streamed on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash uh, it's here. I'll have a link to this as well. Follow me. I'm going to go live uh, 7 p.m. my time, you know, 9 a.m. GMT. Figure out what that, uh, what the, figure out what that is in your time zone. Uh, should be pretty good. If you're European or, you know, Australian, Asian, maybe New Zealand, if you want to stay up kind of late, it should be a good time for you. If you're in the U.S. or like South America, Canada, Probably not a great time, but, you know, I wanted to make this accommodating to, uh, you know, a different kind of crowd of people, rather than just US. Next Quad Cup might be a bit different. And yeah. So don't forget, join the Quad Cup server. Uh, this has been a bit of a long video. A bit longer than I wanted it to be, but hopefully I went over a good amount of things. I'll have our chapters and stuff, so if there's a specific part you're wondering about, I'll try and, uh, you know, make it so you can just skip to that. Skip past the part where I explain uh, double elimination packets for 10 minutes if you already know how that works, for example. And yeah, um, hopefully that explains things. If not, 
Discord, ask questions. And yeah, hopefully people sign up and you have a good time if you do. Thanks for watching.